Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, with my pastor. It's Pastor Samuel Sellers III, and we're live at 5 on this Motivational Monday morning, and this is another day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, my ears are a little stopped up this morning, so bear with me this morning. We had a phenomenal weekend, not only on Sunday morning at the Upper Room, but we had an awesome time uh, supporting our apostle uh, in Tifton, Georgia. We are getting ready for Win Women Worship, and on yesterday, the, the, the voice, the sound that I've been praying about, the sound that I've been looking for to help us usher in the presence of God at Win Women Worship uh, was at the service on yesterday. So pray for me as I reach out and 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 get this um, finalized, all the plans finalized for Win Women Worship, which will be held October 5th, 2024 at the Upper Room. And it's not only for women. This is a Command Your Morning event. So we invite and we will be providing transportation for those in the Valdosta area who would like to come to Waycross on October the 5th for when women worship our speaker for the, for that night will be po Apostle Takesha Russian. But let's get right on into it this morning. We're live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611. Access code 266-590. We're going to do a, a little recap from Friday and yesterday morning, but I'm going to add something uh, that I did not share on Friday morning. I'm also going to share something for those who may be wondering, well, what do I do if I ask the church to pray and my situation remains the same? What, what do I do? How do I respond? What does that say about God if I prayed about it and either it stays the same, it doesn't change when I want it, you know, or the way God does it is not the way I expect it. I, I want to encourage somebody this morning uh, to stay in faith where that is concerned. But we're going to get deeper into responding to that question in just a moment. So we're going to go back to Acts chapter 12, verse number 11. We're going to go back to that just for Facebook Live this morning to encourage the people of God on Facebook that there is nothing too hard for God. I want to talk from the subject this morning, when the church prays, when the church prays. And when I talk about the church, I'm talking about those who are called out believers, true followers of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask evangelist Paulette Griffin to open us up with a word of prayer. And then we're going to do a brief recap from Friday and Sunday. But there's something that I want to share that I did not share on those two days. I want to encourage Facebook Live this morning. Evangelist Griffin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Like and share. Gracious Thank you, Lord. Father, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy like of praise. Like and share. Like if we had 10,000 comments, we couldn't praise and magnify our name enough. For all that you've done in our lives. And Hallelujah. We thank you for the open heaven that you provided in a fresh Thank you, Lord. Blessing. How you've even stirred up the very gifts in us, Lord God, as we gather together from the north of Good south, morning. Right? God and bless Lord. you. Heavenly Father, then learn more of your word, that your word shall be planted upon good ground, come up in the fruition as you called it to be. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Pastor Samuel Evangelist, Dr. Renee Sellers for bringing forth command your morning prayer line right here on Fox C 97.5 FM. Thank you for each and every family represented upon the line, every ministry as we gather together right now, Lord God. God bless you, Lord, everybody. Lord, Good morning. morning. Thank, Lord, you, are the greatness Thank you, Lord. The, power, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and earth. Hallelujah. That is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and thou art exalted. Hallelujah. We know no other help but thee. We thank you right now, Lord God, for this precious woman of God, Pastor uh, Evangelist Renee Sellers, as she brings forth the word this day, Lord God. Tell me, Father, we ask that you restore, replenish, renew, and refresh her for furtherance of thy kingdom work. We rebuke any retaliation spirit by action, deed, or spoken word right now. Thank Lord you, God, Lord. She shall come forth with authority and power and deliver. 
Thou art worthy, Lord God, and there is none like thee. It is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray and thank you for all things. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. God bless you, everybody. God keep you. Good morning in Africa this morning. Good morning. Going Once again, we're going back to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter uh, 12. Somebody say Acts chapter 12. And we're looking at verses 1 through 11, but we're not going to go as deep as we did the other day. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. I do want to read a couple of verses from Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, but, and I'm going to define the church. I'm going to define who makes up the church because what happened with Peter when he was in prison, the Bible says, but constant prayer in Acts chapter 12 and verse number five, a constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. Constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. And when Peter released, he finally came to himself he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and God still uses angels and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. My message hangs on that word expectation, but I want to define the church. Somebody say when the church prays, that's my subject this morning, when the church prays praise because the word says in verse number five and the church when peter was in jail offered constant prayer to god for peter in his moment of distress so what let's let's define the church who makes up the church somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say i am the church i make up the church because the church as it was it talks about in acts chapter 12 is, is made up of all believers of Jesus Christ. Every individual who has accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life. And if that's you on Facebook this morning, I need you to put some hearts on the screen. Let the world know that I have decided, come on somebody, to follow Jesus. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. I have decided that I will follow him. I, I have decided, no looking back. The church is made up of all believers in Jesus Christ. Those who have accepted him as their Lord and Savior. Come on, those who have accepted him and it includes. The church is inclusive, as we, as we talked about in one of our devotions, that the gospel is all inclusive. This includes all nations, all races, and all backgrounds who have uni are united by their faith. Do you realize that there is to be no division in the true church? Let, let me let me rephrase that because I said there is to be no division. There is no division in the true church. There is no division in the kingdom of God because the kingdom is made up of all those who are true followers, no matter the race, no matter the ethnicity, no matter the background. This is what makes up the church, often called the body of Christ, where Jesus is our head where Jesus is our head and it is made up of, of diverse people, diverse believers with diverse gifts. So we're going to stop right there. Since we define the church, can somebody put your put some hearts on the screen and say, that's talking to me. So the church was giving constant prayer to God on behalf of Peter, because number one, they didn't want the same thing to happen to James to happen to Peter. So I'm talking from the subject when the church prays, because when the church prays, what the enemy expects, our prayers deflect. Somebody needs to write that down. What the, what the enemy expects, prayer deflects. And I'm going to talk about from this this morning, even when it comes to our emotions. Even when it comes to how we see our situation, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous has much power and gets results. So I want us to hang on this word expectation in, in verse number 11, because God delivered Peter because the church prayed from the expectation of the enemy. And so the Bible says, listen, as we, as we talk about the expectation of the enemy, instead of seeing the, the, your, your problem as punishment, I want you to look at this as an opportunity. 
I want you to look at this as an opportunity. I want you to look at your issue as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to look to Jesus, as an opportunity to make your request known and allow the church the opportunity to pray for you. Miss Felicia Fulmore, the church command your morning prayed for you when that incident occurred. So you just reminded me that the church still needs to be praying for your recovery. I need somebody to say when the church prays. When the church prays, we know the story. We know the story. We're not going to get back all into it. We know that Herod saw that his killing of James, uh, the first uh, one of the the first apostle to be martyred in the early church. We understand that 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 Herod, the king, when he saw that the killing of James pleased the people, he decided that he was going to kill Peter, too. But he was going to wait until after the Passover under heavy guard, maximum security. Herod put four squads of soldiers to guard Peter, number one, because in Acts chapter five, number 19, Peter had already escaped prison one time before. So whatever I can do to please the people to keep Peter from escaping so I can kill him after the Passover, that's what I'm going to do. And so ladies and gentlemen, the soldiers would rotate in shifts to guard Peter. He was under heavy guard, but I need somebody to be encouraged this morning that it doesn't matter what is surrounding you when the church prays, God can deliver you. Can somebody put some hearts on the screen and look at your neighbor and say, things happen when the church, the people of God, begin to pray. And so Herod was determined, Sister Felicia, that Peter was not going to get out of this. He was determined that Peter was going to stay put until the time came for his execution. He was determined, ladies and gentlemen, that Peter was going to be bound until the day he died. I, I need somebody to think about that for a moment because the enemy thinks that you're going to be bound until the day you die. The enemy wants you to be bound by depression until the day you die. The enemy wants you to be bound by sickness until until sickness takes you out. The enemy wants you to be bound by the spirit of rejection and offense. But with the church praying for me, I need somebody to declare that God can deliver me. I know I'm getting excited on a Monday morning, but this is why we call it motivational Monday. <laughs> this is why we call it motivational Monday. The, the Herod wanted Peter bound until the day that he was going to bring him out for his execution. But look at your neighbor said when the church prayed, they shifted the plot and the plan of the enemy. And there are a lot of us who survived our situation because somebody was praying for us. There are a lot of us that got delivered from that situation because somebody was praying for us. There are those of you that are watching this morning that are being healed because somebody in the church is praying for you. Herod used his authority and his power to suppress Peter and the enemy may use authority and power to try to suppress God's people. But I need you to write that down. If this down, if you're taking notes on Facebook and if you're taking notes on the call, no matter what the enemy tries, no matter what the, those in authority try, no matter what they try to do to me, this is not the end of my story because the church is praying for me. This is not the end of, of your story, Sister Fulmore. This is not the end of your story, Sister Mitchell. And I need you to say this to yourself on this Motivational Monday that I know that this is happening to me, but this is not the end of my story. Listen, Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the people of God. Constant prayer. I don't see. I don't see it on the on the page. I need you to write this down. This is not the end of my story because God sees me and He knows what I'm going through and He cares. This is not the end of my story. I might be down right now, but thank God for the prayers of the righteous. I'm getting back up again. This is not the end of my story. I know they wrote me off, but somebody say I'm getting back on. Y'all quiet this morning. This is not the end of your story. And so the church responded to Peter's imprisonment, not with despair, 
But somebody said they responded with persistent prayer. They interceded for him collectively. And ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid to make your request known. Don't be afraid to let the prayer band know what you're going through. Don't be afraid to listen. Let the prayer meeting, the people, the intercessors know what you're going through because they interceded collectively for him. God came through supernaturally for him. I need somebody to look at your neighbor and say, if God came through for Peter, that's the same God that can come through for me when the church prays. <laughs> when the church prays, the church has responsibility. And I said this on Friday from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1, New King James. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. He's talking to the church. Paul is talking to the church and encouraging believers uh, to, to, to make sure that they are offering all kinds of prayers, including intercession. Somebody say for everybody, including since we're getting ready for November, the candidate that you don't agree with. Y'all quiet, including the candidate that me, you may not think is fit for the job. Our responsibility is to pray for those in leadership, especially those in government, so that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. And so Ephesians chapter six and verse number 18, it says for the church, for you and I, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and like I said to them on yesterday, and I said this before, that praying in the spirit does not always mean praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit means to let your the, the Holy Spirit guide your prayers, to let your mind come in alignment with the Holy Spirit so that you do not pray amiss. Come on, somebody, so that you can pray the will of God, so you can pray the word of God. And so the Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication application for the saints. Do you recognize that we are supposed to be watching out for each other as believers? And, and, and the upper room always says that, yes, Pastor Sellers and I, we are assigned to upper room. We are the, the stewards of the upper room. We are, are, are responsible for protecting the anointing in the upper room. But watch this. We are not only responsible for upper room as kingdom citizens, Lakeisha Roberts, we're responsible for covering Evergreen. We're responsible for covering the Church of God equipment. We're responsible for covering the, oh, y'all quiet this morning. We're responsible for covering the life church because we are one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So thereby we're being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, not just the ones that go to your church. Not just the ones that you fellowship with every week, but every member of the Lord's church is to be watchful for other members of the Lord's church. If you got that this morning, put some hearts on the screen. <laughs> and so, and so Paul is calling for persistent prayer for all the saints. Somebody say all the saints this morning, put all the saints on the screen. And this means while we have certain members on the intercessory prayer team, there are not the only people who should be interceding. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. When another member of the church is going through, every believer should turn their face to the wall. Every believer should turn down their plate. Every believer should go before the Lord, especially when we are informed or even when we discern that our brother or sister is under attack. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when a brother or sister in Christ is under attack, the church is supposed to respond with prayer. When a brother or sister in the church is under attack and see, this is the problem with many people today. They are, watch this now, they are joining in with the attack. Come on, they're joining in through gossip. They're, they're joining in by saying, oh, they deserve this. Listen, not everybody going through a challenge is being punished. Come on, somebody. Some Watch this. Not everybody that's going through a challenge is being punished. Some people are going through because they're being processed. Y'all quiet this morning. I need y'all to write this, this down. Not every believer, because they're going through something, that does not mean you are being punished. 
I need somebody to understand on this motivation of Monday. More often than not, you are being processed. You are being developed. You are being strengthened. You are being taught. And so thereby the people in the church must be interceding for other members in the church. With, with, with the people in the church were determined that what killed James was not going to kill Peter. And I need some praying people this morning, put some praying hands on the screen. I need some praying people, some believing people, some consecrated believers, those who know how to get a prayer through this morning to encourage your friends, to encourage your family that what kills somebody else is not going to kill you. Come on, somebody, Sister Felicia survived the attack because somebody was already being proactive in prayer. And I want to encourage Felicia Fullmore this morning that you're going to get through this woman of God. What happened to somebody? somebody else what kills somebody else i need you to look at your neighbor and say because the church prayed what killed them won't kill you can somebody give god praise this morning can somebody give god glory can somebody like and share and encourage your neighbors on your facebook page <laughs> what happened to them what happened to james the church was determined that this thing was not going to happen to Peter. And, and so I want to encourage you this morning to keep believing and keep trusting until you see the manifestation of what you prayed for. Look at your neighbor and say, there is power when believers learn to pray together. Yet there is power in the name of Jesus. And there is power when believers learn that we are more powerful together. We are better together. Now listen, where two or three are gathered together, the Lord is in the midst. Can somebody encourage your neighbor this morning that when we come together with agreement, there is power in agreement. There's power in agreement when the church prays. So God sends an angel to deliver Peter from prison. And when Herod was about to bring Peter out to execute him, that night, Peter was sleeping. And I've made this point on Friday. I made this point on yesterday. And I want to make this point again. Somebody say Peter was sleeping. I need you to put on Facebook, Peter <laughs> was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door would keep in the prison facing imminent death. Peter is sleeping. Listen, his brother, covenant brother had died, but Peter is sleeping. Come on, somebody. He, he's got being persecuted and the church is being persecuted and he's under maximum security, under heavy guard. But guess what? Peter was sleeping. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that one of the greatest indicators of your choice to trust God is when you don't allow your situation to keep you awake at night. I need somebody to like and share and encourage your friend. One of the greatest indicators of your choice, of your confidence in God is when you do not allow your situation to cause you to toss and turn all night. Listen, another great indicator of your decision to trust God is when you are not moved by your decision, but you are moved to trust God and, and go to the Lord in prayer. Listen, even if Peter had died the way they expected him to die, at least he will spend eternity in glory. So I want to encourage you like I encouraged them on Friday and I encouraged them on yesterday to trust in the Lord and get some sleep tonight. Let me take a quick break for Station ID. If you if you determine you're not going to toss and turn, if you determine you're not going to worry about this thing, if you determine you're going to rest in God, if you determine to be anxious for nothing, I need you to put some hearts on the screen and type in the comments, I'm going to sleep tonight because I I know that God is able. Come on, somebody. I know that God is still God. That even if he don't move the way I ask him to move, he is still God and he is still able. Can somebody say when the church prays? We are live at five this morning on WHLJ with our motivational Monday morning. Doing a little recap with some addendums. <laughs> doing a recap with some addendums this morning of what we talked about on Friday. We're on WHLJ 97.5 FM, 
Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y 97.com. And you can also join us on the, on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. Also join us on Facebook Live. And if you're already with us this morning, like and share. Somebody say, when the church prays. This is my, uh, amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 7 through 10. I'm just going to summarize it this morning. The angel came into the prison where Peter was. He, he lit up the cell. The, the angel lit up the cell and woke Peter up. I'm not going to get all into what I did on Friday. You got to go to YouTube and pull up the video. But the angel woke P Peter up, telling him to get up quickly. And when he got up, the chains that they put on him fell off supernaturally. The angel instructed Peter. And I need you to notice the word instructed. The angel instructed Peter to get dressed. <laughs> Listen, Peter had gotten comfortable <laughs> Listen, Peter had gotten comfortable that the angel had to tell him to put your clothes on, put your sandals on, and let's get up out of here. The angel instructed Peter to get dressed, and Peter did what? He obeyed the instructions, and the angel led him right out of the prison. And one of the key responsibilities of believers who are stuck in any situation is that when God gives instructions, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, follow the instructions. One of the reasons that people are still bound. One of the reasons that a lot of people are still struggling. One of the reasons that a lot of people are still stuck in the same cycles a year after year after year is because God has provided instructions, but people are not adhering to the instructions that the Lord has provided. And even when situations seem hopeless, ladies and gentlemen, listen, if you want to get out of this thing, if you want to see deliverance, watch this, then you're going to have to follow the instructions. Listen, Peter, had to obey the instructions if he was going to see deliverance. And ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook Live, on Command Your Morning, there are moments, yes, the angel showed up. Yes, the chains fell off supernaturally. But Peter had to, watch this now, faith without works is dead. Peter had to get up and he had to get out of that cell. Peter had to follow the instructions if he was going to see deliverance. And for a lot of people this morning, listen, those of you that are watching and listening, that there are moments that God will give you instructions and you're going to see deliverance only when you follow the instructions. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's better to obey God. I want to obey God. I am determined to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not unto my own understanding. Somebody say, follow the instructions. Obey God. He provides instructions through his word. He provides instructions through his pastors. He provides instructions even as he did with Peter. The angel said, get up, put your clothes on. Let's go. We gone. Let's get out of here. Peter supernaturally God intervened. Peter still had to honor and obey the instructions in order to see deliverance. And so God's power is greater than any earthly force. But you and I, the people of God, have to not only recognize our authority, but we've got to operate in that authority. God supernaturally intervened on Peter's behalf. And when Peter finally came to himself, Acts 12 and 11 says, I know for certain, he says, that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Peter says, the Lord, come on somebody, sent his angel and delivered me from the hands of those who expected me to die in this place. The Lord sent his angel to deliver me from the hands of Herod and the expectation of the people. And the people expected that after the Passover, uh, Peter was going to die. They expected him to die. But look at your neighbor and say, because the church prayed, God decided that Peter was going to live. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that they expected you to die. But the 
the church prayed and God decided that you're going to live. The, 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 they counted you out, ladies and gentlemen, but God decided that you was going to make it. They expected him to die at the Passover, but because the church prayed, what the enemy expected, prayer deflected. Uh, what the enemy expected, prayer deflected. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, there is power in collective prayer. The Bible says in James 5, 16, confess your faults or your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much in the, I believe it's the Amplify. It says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous has much power and gets results. So when they prayed for Peter, they were able to see results. And ladies and gentlemen, the church's intercession led to God's intervention. I need somebody to write that down. The church's intercession led to God. God's intervention. God can intervene supernaturally when the church prays. Here's a story that I want to share with you all this morning. Here's a story. And, and you know, we've, we've probably gotten accustomed to Sarah and Mary. We're going to talk about Sarah <laughs> this morning. We, we're going to talk about, about Sarah. There's a story about a woman named Sarah. Sarah was a nurse and Sarah was completely dedicated to her job. She was uh, faced with a situation somewhat like Peter in the church. It was urgent. This thing was detrimental and this is something that she was faced with. I wanna encourage you with Sarah's story this morning because Sarah had a younger brother by the name of Tom and, and, and Tom had been in an accident a severe car accident, and that accident left him critically injured and in intensive care. Now, I can talk about Sarah, but I can also talk about Sarah and Tom, but I can also talk about Renee and Steve. Come on, somebody. Because when my brother, Steve, had a, had a stroke, the church begin to pray. I, I need, I, let me talk about Renee and Steve. Let, let me, somebody get my brother on the line this morning. When, when, when my brother, Stephen, had a stroke, my sister-in-law called my husband and I. The, the, his church began to pray. And because the church prayed, my brother came through, on, listen, and lived to see the goodness of the Lord. I want to encourage somebody, ladies and gentlemen, the situation may not look good. But when the people begin to pray, can somebody say God can turn a bad situation into a good situation? Let me go back to Sarah. Her brother was in an accident. And, and the doctors, you know, were grim and the prognosis was bleak. The family was devastated and fear gripped their hearts. Sarah, known for her unwavering faith, and listen, immediately reached out to her church for prayer. When you going through something, do you trust your church to pray for you? Do you trust the intercessors to get a prayer through? Do you trust the believers in the church to pray? Immediately she reached out to her church and the church began to pray. When my brother had that stroke, immediately my sister-in-law reached out to the church and the church immediately began to pray. And so the church came together an intense wave of prayer began. An intense wave of prayer began when my brother Stephen had his stroke and my brother had to be lifelighted to Savannah. But because the church prayed, I don't even think Stephen, he may have stayed in the hospital a week. Stephen has no, he has a, a still, re, listen, there's still some areas that need recovery, but somebody say, my brother is still alive. <laughs> there's still some areas that, that God is still working to bring total and, and complete recovery, but my brother survived. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that you may have a little bruise. You may have to have a little cut. Come on, somebody. You may even go into the hospital, but at least you survived because the church prayed, <laughs> because the church prayed. Somebody say, at least I survived because the church went into warfare. The church 
went into prayer for my brother Stephen and he's still a work in progress but somebody say at least he's still alive I want to encourage somebody this morning I'm going to stop talking about Sarah because I done told you about Renee and Steve at least he's still alive and ladies and gentlemen there will be moments that that your recovery astonishes even medical professionals but something happens when the church prays, your, your recovery will be nothing short of a miracle. Why? Because the church went into prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this now. Watch this. Listen, in Tom's story, it's the doctor said, it's as if the danger that was anticipated has completely turned away. And when the church prays, ladies and gentlemen, the danger that the enemy anticipated, the danger that the doctors anticipated can be completely turned away. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that when the church prays, even the doctors would be astonished that you survived. Sarah knew exactly what to do. And Sophia, my sister-in-law, knew exactly what to do. The prayers of the church, St. Paul New Life, Upper Room Outreach Ministries, command your morning in every church connected to this ministry. The prayers of the church deflected what the enemy expected. Come on, somebody. I had already lost a brother in 2020. My daddy couldn't take another loss. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that you going to get through this. Your family member going to get through this. Your loved one going to get through this because the church decided to intercede because the church went into prayer. Listen, what your, oh God, survival is going to astonish the medical professionals. Can somebody put some hearts on the screen and say, when the church... Praise. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 17, that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. God hears and delivers the righteous who cry out to him. But somebody may ask, well, what if I ask the church to pray and things still don't change? What if I ask the church to pray and it's not the answer that I wanted to listen, answer my response to those who may be asking that question is don't stop praying. My response to those who may be asking that, that question is stay in faith. Come on, somebody. My response to those who are asking that question is don't stop trusting God. Because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. The word says in Philippians chapter 4, it says be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says let your requests be made known to God. God. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Persistent prayer, watch this, is not just about changing your situation. Persistent prayer will change how you see your situation. Persistent prayer will shift your mentality. Persistent prayer will help us come into alignment with the will of God. And as Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, when we make our request known to God, we can experience his peace regardless of our situation. So one thing that, I, I, listen, one thing the enemy wants is for God's people to let discouragement and depression set in. But when the church prays, even the attack against your mind, the negative emotions can be deflected and God can turn your grief into joy. Even with the attacks against your mind, listen, where the enemy wants you to be, be, be a restless, that the Lord's peace will let you rest tonight. Come on, somebody. I need you to write this down if you're taking notes. The enemy wants you to change the way you see God. God wants to change the way you see your situation. I need to say that again for those in the back of the room, for those who missed it this morning. The enemy won't, listen, through this situation, through this adverse situation, the enemy wants to change the way you see God. God, if you were real, why would you let this happen? God, if you were real, why is this going on? The, the, listen, Peter could have said that, but remember, Peter was sleeping. <laughs> The enemy wants you to change the way you see God. 
But God wants you to change the way you see your situation. Peter was able to rest knowing, listen, even with faced with the fact that he could be killed after the Passover. But that was not the end of Peter's story. Why? Because the church prayed. God had more work for Peter to do because the church prayed prayed. Peter got out of this and the Lord delivered him supernaturally. Peter had to get up and go and follow the instructions, but God supernaturally intervened on his behalf. Peter was able to rest in God. People, Peter was able to listen, to rest in the presence of God because he had confidence in God. That was not the end of his story. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that your situation is not the end of yours. What the enemy expected, prayer deflected. This story of Peter being supernaturally released from jail is a reminder that believers, the church that we defined earlier in our devotion, those who are part of God's family can get their needs met through prayer. Peter's deliverance is a testament to the church that there is nothing too hard for God. What else happens when the church prays? The world sees that we are united in our faith and that we have compassion for everybody. And remember, it is the unity of the church that draws the attention of the world according to when Jesus prayed in John 17. Let me say that again. It is the unity of the church that draws the attention of the world. What happens when the church prays? It shows the world that we are totally and completely dependent on God. Is there anybody watching this morning? Anybody listen this morning that can testify that I trust in God? Come on, somebody. My Savior, I trust in God. We are totally and completely dependent on God. What happens when the church prays? It shows the world that we are committed to keeping Jesus' command to love ye one another. And the Bible says, how will men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another? And one way that we show our love for each other is that when a brother or sister is going through, we pray for each other. Somebody say, when the church prays. So, Father, we come before you this morning praying and giving you glory for you are our father. You are God and beside you there is no other. We bless your name, Lord God, as your word says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Trust him to direct your path. Lord God, we trust in you this morning. We're trusting in you to move in, in diff- what we see as difficult situations. The enemy wants us to look at you in a negative way, but we thank it that you want us to look at our situation in light of your word, in light of what you promised so that we can look at our situation in a different way. Your word says, count it all joy when you go through various trials for the trial of your faith produces endurance. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we will not be anxious for anything, but we'll be thankful for everything. We give thanks in every situation. Thank you, Lord God. My mother used to say when she was in pain, I thank God for the pain because at least I can feel it. At least I'm still here. So the Bible says in James 1, Lord, we bless you where your word says, count it all joy when you go through various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we would not see what we're going through as punishment, but we see what we go through as an opportunity to learn and grow. We thank you right now for ever increasing faith that we're going from faith to faith and from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for a praying church. We thank you for the community of the Lord's church. We thank you, Lord God, that we can gather together and pray for one another. I thank you for my brothers and sisters on command your morning. I thank you for the brothers and sisters that join us on live. I thank you for every individual that is partnered with us to intercede for others in the name of Jesus. We give you glory right now for you are Jehovah Shalom. We thank 
thank you that you are our peace. And Lord God, we thank you for that peace that surpasses all understanding. We give you glory in the name of Jesus, for you are Jehovah Shema. You would never leave us nor forsake us, and we bless your name. We honor you, Father God, for you are Jehovah Rapha, a healer that makes all bitter things sweet. So, Father, we give you glory in the name of Jesus, and we break, oh God, those that are dealing with sickness and disease, we break every curse of infirmity, sickness, and premature death off the bodies of those who are dealing with sickness right now, those who are dealing with injuries, those who are preparing for surgeries. Father God, as Apostle Ween said to the woman of God on yesterday, we declare that surgery will not be needed because God is going to heal supernaturally. And Lord God, if you deliver Peter supernaturally, you can heal bodies supernaturally. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, oh God, we declare right now, God, that every sickness in our bodies, we command them to leave and not come back again. We command them to leave and not come back again. Every hidden sickness, every hidden disease, we declare that it will leave in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against your people shall prosper. We give you glory, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We speak to infections to come out. We speak to cancer to come out. We speak to diabetes to come out. We speak to high blood pressure in the name of Jesus with the authority that we have as citizens of the kingdom. We speak to it right now. We speak to every condition and that condition has got to obey. Oh God, we speak, oh God, to miracles. We speak to healings. We speak to signs and wonders and we declare that there be released unto your people on this motivational Monday this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for what's going to happen at when women worship on October 5th. We declare right now that we shall see miracles. We shall see healings. We shall see signs. We shall see wonders that the women and the men of God will be set free and delivered from every situation, every infirmity in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We give you praise right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. As the woman of God said, the teacher is silent during the test. The teacher is silent during the test, but the teacher, a good teacher does not leave you. A good teacher is not too far away from you. And Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we will not be discouraged when we, when we, it seems that you're not speaking, but we'll be encouraged because we recognize that you hear the prayers of the righteous. We bless you and we praise your name that Jesus carried our sickness. And we ask you to forgive us, Lord God, when we have allowed fear to set in, when we have allowed guilt to set in, when we have allowed self-rejection, when we have allowed unforgiveness, when we have allowed pride, oh God, when we have allowed bitterness to open the door to any sickness or disease, we renounce those things. We disown those things in the name of Jesus. And we close the door to those things. And we open the door to healing in the name of Jesus. Our healing draws nigh in Jesus' name. We bless you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. We speak healing to every individual that is represented on command your morning. If there's a family member that is sick and you are a, a part of the command your morning ministry, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we declare that they are redeemed from sickness and disease. As Psalm 91 says, no e, oh God, no sickness or disease, no evil shall befall them. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For the Lord has given his angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. Right? Right now, as the church, we intercede for our children. We ask you to cover them today as they go throughout the school. Father, we ask you to dispatch your angels to police the hallway of every school within the every district within the sound of my voice. We ask you, oh God, to dispatch angels to police the hallway, to police the bathrooms, to police the parking lot, to police the buses, to police the administrative uh, uh, building. We ask you to dispatch angels to this, oh God, to minister and war on our children's behalf. We come against gun violence in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that a praying grandmother can, oh God, the prayers of a, a righteous grandmother can deflect the, the, the expectation of the enemy. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We come against gun violence in our community. We come against gun violence in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against our children or grandchildren shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we 
praise you. We come against premature death this morning. We declare that you shall live and not die. You will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We declare that today in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you and we praise you right now, Father, for you are good God. You are a merciful God. You are a righteous God. And we bless your name right now. We bless you. We speak strength to those that are watching. We speak healing to those that are watching. In the mighty name of Jesus, physically and emotionally, in the name of Jesus, we declare that you have the peace of God. That peace that surpasses all human comprehension. That peace that even your best friend cannot understand with what you're going through. We declare that now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, that we may, that, that there may, may be those that are dealing with a challenge that they may seem is, is, is unbearable. But Father, we thank you that you will enable us to endure. We thank you that through the prayers of the righteous, we can endure any situation. And as you deliver Peter, we declare that those that are watching, that we that they will see deliverance. We thank you that we shall see your goodness in the land of the living. That is our song for today, Father. We shall see your goodness in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. When the church prays, somebody look at your neighbor and say what the enemy expected, prayer deflected. I've been praying about a situation concerning some family members. And, and the concern that I had became a reality not too long ago. But because I had been interceding, because someone else had already been praying, what the enemy expected, prayer deflected. And those people, those family members that I was concerned about survived. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of your story. I need you to write this down on Facebook. I need you to write this down. If you're taking notes, I need you to encourage your family member. This, whatever your this is, is not the end of your story. God bless you. God keep you. When the, What the enemy expected with Peter, prayer deflected. Same God back then. Same God right now. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verses 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith and who can win this battle against the world. Only those who believe that Jesus is the son of God. For those who believe, I encourage you to declare, I win. I am victorious. And because of Jesus, this is not the end of your story. Be encouraged on this Motivational Monday. Those on the call, please remain on the line. God bless your face.